Appeal by William Carlos Williams. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. You who are so mighty, crimson salamander, hear me once more. I lay among the half burned sticks at the edge of the fire. The fiend was creeping in. I felt the cold tips of fingers. Oh, crimson salamander! Give me one little flame, one, that I may bind it protectingly about the wrist of him that flung me here, here, upon the very centre. This is my song. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Blow, Bugle, Blow by Alfred Lord Tennyson Read for LibriVox.org by Rebecca Callahan. The splendor falls on castle walls And snowy summits old in story The long light shakes across the lakes And the wild cataract leaps in glory Blow, bugle, blow, set the wild echoes flying Blow, bugle, answer echoes, dying, dying, dying O oh, hark, O oh, hear, how thin and clear And thinner, clearer, farther going O oh, sweet and far from cliff and scar, the horns of Elfland faintly blowing. Blow, let us hear the purple glens replying. Blow, bugle, answer echoes, dying, dying, dying. O oh, love, they die in yon rich sky. They faint on hill or field or river. Our echoes roll from soul to soul and grow forever and forever. Blow, bugle, blow, set the wild echoes flying. And answer echoes, answer. Dying, dying, dying. This recording is in the public domain. A Deathbed by James Aldrich. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Robert Beach. Her suffering ended with the day, yet lived she at its close, and breathed the long, long night away in statue-like repose. But when the sun in all his state illumined the eastern skies, she passed through glory's morning gate and walked in paradise. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. El Dorado by Edgar Allan Poe Read for LibriVox.org by Julian Jameson Gaily bedight, a gallant knight, in sunshine and in shadow, had journeyed long, singing a song, in search of El Dorado. But he grew old, this knight so bold, and o'er his heart a shadow fell as he found no spot of ground that looked like El Dorado. And as his strength failed him at length, he met a pilgrim shadow, Shadow, said he, where can it be, this land of El Dorado? Over the mountains of the moon, down the valley of the shadow, Ride, boldly ride, the shade replied, if you seek for El Dorado. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Good Night by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake In brilliant gaslight I turn the kitchen spigot And watch the water plash into the clean white sink. On the grooved drain board to one side Is a glass filled with parsley, crisped green, Waiting for the water to freshen. I glance at the spotless floor. A pair of rubber sandals lie side by side under the wall table. All is in order for the night. Waiting with a glass in my hand, three girls in crimson satin pass close before me on the murmurous background of the crowded opera. It is memory playing the clown. 
three vague meaningless girls full of smells and the rustling sound of cloth rubbing on cloth and the little slippers on carpet high school french spoken in a loud voice parsley in the glass still in shining brings me back i take my drink and yawn deliciously i am ready for bed End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Griefs by Emily Dickinson. Read for LibriVox.org by Becky Crackle. November sixteenth, two thousand and six. Canal Winchester, Ohio. Griefs by Emily Dickinson. I measure every grief I meet with analytic eyes. I wonder if it weighs like mine, or has an easier size. I wonder if they bore it long, or did it just begin. I could not tell the date of mine, it feels so old a pain. I wonder if it hurts to live, and if they have to try, and whether could they choose between, they would not rather die. I wonder if when years have piled some thousands on the cause of early hurt, if such a lapse could give them any pause. Or would they go on aching still through centuries above, enlightened to a larger pain by contrast with the love? The grieved are many, I am told, the reason deeper lies. Death is but one and comes but once and only nails the eyes. There's grief of want and grief of cold, a sort they call despair. There's banishment from native eyes in sight of native air. And though I may not guess the kind correctly, yet to me a piercing comfort it affords in passing cavalry. To note the fashions of the cross, of those that stand alone, still fascinated to presume that some are like my own end of griefs this recording is in the public domain gulls by william carlos williams read for librivox dot org by alan davis drake My townspeople, beyond in the great world are many with whom it were far more profitable for me to live than here with you. These whirl about me, calling, calling, and for my own part I answer them, loud as I can. And they, being free, pass. I remain. Therefore, listen for you will not soon have another singer. First, I say this. You have seen the strange birds, have you not, that sometimes rest upon our river in winter? Let them cause you to think well, then, of the storms that drive many to shelter. These things do not happen without reason. And the next thing I say is this. I saw an eagle once circling against the clouds over one of your principal churches. Easter it was, a beautiful day. Three gulls came from above the river and crossed slowly seaward. Oh, I know you have your own hymns. I have heard them. And because I knew they invoked some great protector, I could not be angry with you, no matter how much they outraged true music. You see, it is not necessary for us to leap at each other. And, as I told you, in the end the gulls moved seaward very quietly. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Alas! By Oscar Wilde. Read for LibriVox.org by Kristen Hughes. 
to drift with every passion, till my soul is a stringed lute on which all winds can play. Is it for this that I have given away mine ancient wisdom and austere control? Methinks my life is a twice-written scroll scrawled over on some boyish holiday, with idle songs for pipe and virelay, which do but mar the secret of the whole. Surely there was a time I might have trod the sunlit heights, and from life's dissonance struck one clear chord to reach the ears of God. Is that time dead? Lo, with a little rod I did but touch the honey of romance, and must I lose a soul's inheritance? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Invitation by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Drake You who had the sense to choose me such a mother, You who had the indifference to create me, You who went to some pains to leave hands off me In the formative stages, I thank you most for that perhaps, but you who with an iron head first fiercest and with strongest love brutalized me into strength old dewlap i have reached the stage where i am teaching myself to laugh come on take a walk with me end of poem this recording is in the public domain Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll Read for LibriVox.org by Julian Jameson T'was brillig, and the slithy toves Did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the borogoves, And the momraths outgrabe. Beware the jabberwock, my son, The jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jubjub bird, And shun the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand, Long time the mangsome foe he sought. So rested he by the tum-tum tree, And stood a while in thought. And as in uffish thought he stood, The jabberwock with eyes of flame Came whiffling through the tulgy wood, And burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through, And through the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead, and with its head He went galumphing. And hast thou slain the jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy, O oh, frabjous day! Kaloo, kalay! He chortled in his joy. T'was brillig, and the slithy toves Did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the borogoves, And the momraths, out grave. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Jenny Kissed Me by Lee Hunt. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Robert Beach. Jenny kissed me when we met, jumping from the chair she sat in. Time, you thief who love to get Sweets into your list, put that in. Say I'm weary, say I'm sad, Say that health and wealth have missed me. Say I'm growing old, but add, Jenny kissed me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love Song 
by William Carlos Williams, read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. I lie here thinking of you. The stain of love is upon the world. Yellow, yellow, yellow. It eats into the leaves, smears with saffron the horned branches that lean heavily against the smooth purple sky. There is no light, only a honey-thick stain that drips from leaf to leaf and limb to limb, spoiling the colors of the whole world. You, far off there, among the wine-red selvage of the West, End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Meditation of the Old Fisherman by William Butler Yeats. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. You waves. Though you dance by my feet like children at play, Though you glow and you glance, Though you purr and you dart, In the dunes that were warmer than these are, The waves were more gay. When I was a boy with never a crack in my heart. The herring are not in the tides as they were of old. My sorrow, for many a creek gave the creel, in the cart that carried the take to Sligo Town to be sold, when I was a boy with never a crack in my heart. And ah, you proud maiden, you are not so fair when his oar is heard on the water, as they were, the proud and apart, who paced in the eve by the nets on the pebbly shore. When I was a boy, with never a crack in my heart. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Metric Figure by William Carlos Williams. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. There is a bird in the poplars. It is the sun. The leaves are little yellow fish swimming in the river. The bird skims above them. Day is on his wings. Phobos, it is he that is making the great gleam among the poplars. It is his singing outshines the noise of leaves clashing in the wind. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. THE OLD MEN by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Drake Old men who have studied every leg show in the city. Old men cut from torch by the perfumed music. Polished or fleeced skulls that stand before the whole theater in silent attitudes of attention. Old men who have taken precedence over young men, and even over dark-faced husbands whose minds are a street with arc-lights. Solitary old men for whom we find no excuses. I bow my head in shame for those who malign you, old men. The peaceful beer of impotence be yours. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Pastoral by William Carlos Williams. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. When I was younger, it was plain to me. I must make something of myself. Older now, I walk back streets, admiring the houses of the very poor, roof out of line with sides, 
the yard cluttered with old chicken wire ashes furniture gone wrong the fences and outhouses built of barrel staves and parts of boxes all if i am fortunate smeared a bluish green that properly weathered pleases me best of all colors no one will believe this of vast import to the nation this recording is in the public domain Portrait of a Young Man with a Bad Heart by William Carlos Williams Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Have I seen her? Only through the window across the street. If I go meeting her on the corner, some damn fool will go blabbering it to the old man, and she'll get hell. He's a queer old bastard. Every time he sees me, you'd think I wanted to kill him. But I figure it out it's best to let things stay as they are, for a while at least. It's hard giving up the thing you want most in the world. But with this damn pump of mine liable to give out, she's a good kid, and I'd hate to hurt her. But if she can get over it, it's the best thing. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Soldier by Rupert Brooke Read for LibriVox.org by Karen Savage If I should die, think only this of me, That there's some corner of a foreign field That is for ever England. There shall be in that rich earth a richer dust concealed, A dust whom England bore, shaped, made aware, gave once her flowers to love, her ways to roam, a body of England's, breathing English air, washed by the rivers, blessed by sons of home. And think this heart, all evil shed away, a pulse in the eternal mind, no less, gives somewhere back the thoughts by England given, her sights and sounds, dreams happy as her day, and laughter learnt of friends, and gentleness, in hearts at peace under an English heaven. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sub Terra by William Carlos Williams. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Where shall I find you? You, my grotesque fellows, that I seek everywhere to make up my band. None, no one with the earthy tastes I require, The burrowing pride that rises subtly as on a bush in May. Where are you this day, you, my seven-year locust with cased wings? Ah, my beauties, how I long! that harvest that shall be your advent thrusting up between the grass up under the weeds answering me that will be satisfying the light shall leap and snap that day as with a million lashes oh i have you yes you are about me in a sense playing under the blue pools that are my windows but they shut you out still there in the half-light for the simple truth is that though i see you clear enough you are not there it is not that it is you you i want god if i could fathom the guts of shadows you come with me poking into negro houses with their gloom and smell in among children leaping around a dead dog mimicking onto the lawns of the rich you to go with me a tiptoe head down under heaven nostrils lipping the wind end of poem this recording is in the public domain sympathetic portrait of a child by William Carlos Williams. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Drake. 
The murderer's little daughter, who is barely ten years old, jerks her shoulders right and left, so as to catch a glimpse of me without turning round. Her skinny little arms wrap themselves this way, then that, reversingly about her body. Nervously she crushes her straw hat about her eyes, and tilts her head to deepen the shadow, smiling excitedly. As best as she can, she hides herself in the full sunlight, her cordy legs writhing beneath the little flowered dress that leaves them bare from the mid-thigh to ankle. Why has she chosen me for the knife that darts along her smile? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.